For thousands of years, people worried about how the universe started. We know that the universe is expanding. And so as we go back in time, the universe was denser. And as we go even farther back in time, it was even more dense. And so there must have been time when the density of the universe, the amount of matter per unit volume, uh, was bigger than the density of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. And if we go back even farther in time, the density of matter was even larger than the density inside the Sun. And so galaxies like the Milky Way or stars like the Sun must have formed at some time in the universe after the Big Bang. And an interesting question is when did that happen? When was the first light produced by stars and galaxies? And we don't know the answer to this question. Right now we have theoretical expectations based on all the data that we have about the early universe. We think, based on the standard cosmological model, that the very first stars started forming tens of millions of years after the Big Bang. Roughly uh, between 50 and 100 million years, that's when the very first stars formed. And then small clusters of stars uh, formed at first and merged to form bigger galaxies along with gas that made more stars. We would like to see if these expectations, theoretical predictions, are confirmed by data. And that's what distinguishes science from um, speculation. Um, fortunately, we can tell how the universe looked like at early time. And the reason we can do that is because light travels to us at a finite speed. So when we look at a distant source, we can see how the source looked like at earlier times. When we look at the mirror, it takes only a few nanoseconds for the light to bounce from our face to the mirror and back. So we actually see an image of ourselves that is very current. But if we were to put the mirror very far away, for example, one light year away, it would take two years for the light to bounce to the mirror and back to us. So we would see an image of ourselves two years ago when we look at that mirror. And so when we look at a very distant universe, we see an image of the universe when it was much younger. And so we can actually tell how the universe looked like at earlier times. It's sort of like an archaeological dig the deeper we dig into the universe, the more ancient is the layer that we are uncovering. And so we can actually go far enough so that light needed to travel to us almost for the entire age of the universe. And we can see how the universe looked like at very early times. Unfortunately, this requires advanced technology. It's not easy to do that because the more distant galaxies are, the fainter they are. So we need very big telescopes to do that. And in the coming decade, the next generation of uh, big telescopes uh, will have a, a characteristic size between 20 to 40 meters. And they will allow us to see the very faint uh, small galaxies that started the process of star formation when the universe was only hundreds of millions of years old. We can also see the effect of those galaxies on the surroundings, on their habitat, the environment, because the stars in those galaxies produced ultraviolet radiation. And ultraviolet radiation can, in principle, break hydrogen atoms that fill up the universe into their constituent electrons and protons. Hydrogen is the most common uh, element in the universe, and it's made of a proton and an electron. And an ultraviolet photon can, in principle, break a hydrogen atom. And so around the very first galaxies, uh, there were um, regions where hydrogen was broken into electrons, free electrons and free protons. So how can we tell that uh, this happened? One way to do that is by imaging hydrogen. So hydrogen uh, emits um, uh, radio waves at a wavelength of 21 centimeter, a very characteristic transition of hydrogen, and we use this transition to map hydrogen in the Milky Way or in other nearby galaxies. But in principle, we can map the distribution of hydrogen in the early universe by observing the same radiation at the wavelength of 21 centimeter when it was emitted, except that since that time, the universe expanded, so the wavelength gets stretched. 
And so we can see the same radiation at longer wavelengths. And by observing the radiation at different wavelengths, we can see different cosmic times because we are looking at different stretching factors of this 21 centimeter wavelength. And so we can actually slice the universe at different times in its evolution by observing different wavelengths in the radio. And at each slice, we are seeing holes in the hydrogen distribution that were produced by the UV radiation emitted by the first galaxies inside these holes. And so when galaxies did not exist, we would see everything in hydrogen with no holes. Once galaxies formed, they produced cavities inside the hydrogen. And as time went on, the cavities grew. And these bubbles or cavities connected to each other and eventually filled up the entire volume. So it's sort of like slicing Swiss cheese that has holes in it. We can get a sense of how galaxies, how quickly they formed and how uh, rapidly they transformed the universe from being mostly neutral hydrogen to being mostly protons and electrons. And so that's another way of probing this cosmic uh, history, seeing the effect of the first galaxies on their environment. There is another way to probe the very first stars, and that's to look at uh, explosions, exploding stars. Um, for example, very rarely there is a massive star that collapses to make a black hole, and in the process of making the black hole, jets are being produced that could penetrate through the envelope of the surrounding star and in principle, these jets can be seen all the way uh, to the edge of the universe. Um, these are called gamma ray bursts. These are flashes of gamma rays that we can actually trace all the way to very early cosmic times. So that's another way of probing the very first stars if we see cosmic explosions at those early times that are extremely bright. And we can use them as beacons of light to try and infer when the first stars formed in the universe. So the universe started uh, relatively uniform. Uh, we see evidence for that in the cosmic microwave background. Uh, the density of matter was almost the same everywhere, except for very small differences from one place to another. And about 400,000 years after the Big Bang, these differences in density started to grow due to the effect of gravity. Regions that were denser than average became even denser with time because of the attractive nature of gravity. And eventually, some of these regions collapsed to make bound objects, gas clouds that included both ordinary matter and surrounded by dark matter around it. And these clouds of gas fragmented to make the very first stars. So in order for the process of star formation to start in the universe, in order for the first stars and galaxies to form, you needed these seeds, uh, density inhomogeneities, that were produced very early on in the universe. Right now, the most popular theory for their formation is inflation, cosmic inflation, that attributes the existence of density inhomogeneities to quantum fluctuations. So in a way, our existence as classical objects uh, was a result of quantum physics in the very early universe. And that's a very interesting connection because quantum mechanics describes reality in terms of a probability. Uh, there is a wave function that describes any, any system. We, are, however, are classical objects, and there is this fascinating path that the universe went through, starting from quantum fluctuations that ended up becoming classical objects like galaxies, stars, or ourselves. Uh, and in a way, we owe our existence to quantum mechanics in the very early universe. Overall, the exploration of the first stars, the first galaxies, is a way of finding our cosmic roots. Um, it's um, part of our heritage, how the universe started to make objects that enriched it with heavy elements. Because we are made of heavy elements, mostly uh, water in our body. And water contains the hydrogen produced in the Big Bang, but also oxygen. And oxygen was made in the interiors of stars. So in order for us to exist, in order for life to exist in the universe, life as we know it, we really need stars to make heavy elements. 
And that process started at those very early times, uh, tens of millions of years after the Big Bang. So tracing when this process started and understanding how it started uh, explains our existence in the universe. And it's, it's very important to complete our uh, photo album of our history all the way back to when the universe was infinite.